Hey there, today we're going to talk about something that I get asked about all the time, and that's what's better to do, game development or enterprise or just non-game development. And I'm going to talk about it from a programming perspective today, and I'll go over all of the pros and cons of both the gaming side, if you want to maybe be a game developer, be a game programmer, or maybe you already are one, and the enterprise side. We'll talk about web development, internal app development, and what that's like, how they compare which one is better to do, what I would recommend, and really what I would recommend for my own kids. In fact, what I do recommend for my own kids. So if you're curious about development, you're not sure if you want to do web development, enterprise stuff, game stuff, or maybe you're doing one and maybe considering the other one, then pay attention and follow along. I'm going to go over this kind of in depth and give you as much info as I have going through know 20 some years of experience doing a little bit of each before we get started though please make sure that you hit the like button or subscribe or just do both and if you have any thoughts about this topic drop a comment down below i'm curious to see what everybody else thinks and what everybody else's experiences are like and also if you're looking at learning unity or you want to get into unity development make sure that you check out the full course path bundle that's down below in the description Let's get started with some comparison. I want to begin by comparing these two job types in three different categories. The first is job availability. Then we'll talk about pay, how much they vary, and then some about fun and just job satisfaction. There's a lot more I want to talk about after that, but those are the key things that I want to dive into. Let's start with job availability. It's obvious to anybody who's looked at this at all that enterprise jobs are definitely more available. There are a lot more companies building enterprise applications than there are game companies. Now, that's not to say that there aren't a lot of game companies. Depending on where you are, there may be a ridiculous number of game companies. In the Southern California area, there are quite a few. In the Austin area, there's a huge number of them. And then also in Virginia and the United States. But also just spread around the world. There are quite a few game companies but enterprise companies, they're everywhere. Every single company essentially can become an enterprise software opportunity or can have an enterprise software job. And when I say enterprise, it doesn't always necessarily mean these big places. It's not always like you're working at Intel or some giant software company or anything like that. You could be working at any mid-sized company or even some big companies out there that do something totally unrelated to software, but they just need software day to day. Think of healthcare companies, uh, property management companies. I, I mean, it really, any little to mid-sized company that runs their own custom software needs stuff. I mean, I've had dentists reach out to me to have their own custom software written. And if we start talking about web development, there's even more work out there. There's so many little startups and just companies out there hiring web developers. If I do a quick search online, I can find what 44,000 web developer jobs just for JavaScript alone versus looking for Unity jobs where there are 187. So obviously, enterprise development is going to win out here. There are a lot more enterprise jobs available than there are game jobs. That's just always going to be the fact of, well, there's just a lot of stuff that needs to be made, a lot of code that needs to be written, and games are just one portion of that code. So enterprise definitely wins here, but if you wanted to be a game developer, don't let that get you down. Hold on till the end. I've got some really good advice and some interesting insight that I think will cheer you right back up. Let's go on to pay. The pay difference is something that gets brought up a lot. A lot of people think that, well, game developers get paid terrible and enterprise developers all make half a million dollars or more. And there's a little bit of a reason for this and a little bit of a misconception as well. So in general, let's start with enterprise developers. Enterprise developers have a huge variance in their pay range. So you could be an enterprise developer that's making close to minimum wage. I've seen plenty of minimum wage jobs out there that are development jobs. In fact, um, there's well, I, I've seen channels that highlight quite a few of them where they just go out and show some of these jobs that literally pay minimum wage to do engineering or web development, you know, basically, basically engineering or enterprise development, the kind of thing that um, you would expect that people are making a ton of money doing. But there are also people on the other end that are making you know, half a million dollars or more working at Google or Facebook. 
the real numbers though what you get what you should expect as an enterprise developer say you've got a little bit of experience is to be at least in the united states somewhere in the 50 to 200 thousand dollar a year range depending on where you are this is again going to vary a lot so your location is going to matter a lot if you're in some rural area that's uh, got a lower cost of living and not very many enterprise jobs then the cost or the pay is going to be quite a bit lower and even if you go to a smaller city the, the cost or pay is going to be a quite a bit lower like you go down to um so if you're from the united states or no united states areas like salt lake city is a medium-sized city that's not really around other cities and the cost there i would say is probably about two-thirds of what the cost would be in somewhere where i'm at like a san diego area or maybe even half the cost of somewhere like a san diego area so cost of the area has a big big impact on it but also the size of the company has a big impact on it well the size and financial stability of the company some small companies also pay really really well but generally the bigger the companies are or the better they are off financially the better they pay and usually the better off financial companies grow when they get to be the bigger bigger ones so the bigger companies tend to be the ones that are paying quite a bit more and the average jobs that are spread around tend to be on the lower to middle range so it's pretty good pay it's not terrible um but there's a lot of variance and i think a lot of people go in expecting that they're just you know going to be making half a million dollars and they're going to go work at google or they're going to go work at facebook and, and again there are places you can do it and it's a lot of work it's not an easy thing to do it's very competitive and you really have to practice and train and be ready for it uh, i know people who've done it and it's uh it's like a full-time job getting ready for it so don't think that that's just like a thing that you fall into and you're just magically going to make that much money um, without moving there and doing all that work so again big variance there let's talk about game development game development pay in my experience has been a bit more stabilized now it's probably just the fact that there are quite a few less employers so people kind of know what everybody else is paying or at least you know game developers who have friends everywhere else kind of have a good idea of what everyone else is paying and i would say that in general as a game developer as a programmer on the programmer side only you should expect to see pay ranges starting around as low as maybe 50,000 although that's kind of on the the low end it would depend where you're at and up into the um probably around 150,000 of course, with all of these, they go up higher and down lower. It's same with enterprise. There are enterprise developers making, you know, a million, two million dollars a year and making zero. And the same is going to be true with game developers too. There are going to be variances there. But what I found is that in general, the uh, game developers, I would say, I would expect it to be closer to maybe seventy to one hundred and twenty thousand in the United States again. So it's a little bit tighter of a range, but I would say a slightly smaller range. Now there, there's another difference though. The one thing that I've seen in game development companies with pay that I haven't seen so much in enterprise companies is relatively big bonuses. Most enterprise companies, not all, some enterprise companies have amazing bonuses. I've heard about them, but I've never really seen them personally. <laughs> um, but most game companies tend to have relatively good bonus programs where they'll give out a, a good bonus based on a release or a launch not all of them but most of the ones that i've worked at on the flip side of that though a lot of big enterprise companies will give you stock and if the company is good and the company is growing then that stock can sometimes be worth as much as your salary now i wouldn't expect that to be the case starting out and you know you're gonna have to understand how all that all that works and everything but um i would say all in all for pay between game development and enterprise i would expect it to be about equal i think that the job availability is going to be you know, obviously enterprise has got the win there but when it comes to actual pay i would say that most of the game developer programmers that i know make as much as or more than most of the enterprise developers i know i can think of a few that are kind of on the outliers but as far as people that i know personally the game developers generally just get paid a bit more i can think of again i don't want to dive too much into outliers but i would say that i wouldn't worry too much about pay either way so let's dive into item number th what, three there we go i got a third a third finger there satisfaction or job satisfaction or fun at work so 
this one, I think it's pretty obvious where it's going to go, but I want to explain why it's going to go there. So I'm going to just start by saying that this is going to go to the, the game development side. And the reason for that is primarily, it's not so much the projects that you're working on. You might think like, hey, it's because you're working on games and you get to play these games all the time. That's so fun, right? Like whenever you're you know, bored, you just stop and you play the game that you're working on. That is definitely not the case. It's more so the fact that with games, you get to really, um, I guess, see the joy and the, the payoff from the end user. With most enterprise applications, you're building something where you're never going to see the people who are actually using the thing. Now, on good, good enterprise teams, you'll get some feedback and you'll actually have some experience going out and seeing the thing in action and getting you know, real world experience with what, what the, whatever the thing you're building is. I've got quite a few horror stories about that exact situation happening and I just don't want to dive into them right now. But in general, you're just not going to be seeing the end result of like your project or your work. You don't see the joy of the customers you know, getting to play your thing. With a game, that's exactly what you get. Well, and the other thing, they're probably not even playing it. They're doing work, right? They're, you're giving them a thing that makes them work, and it's not something that really usually excites them very much, right? Like, hey, here's a new thing to make it so you can do more tasks every day or whatever. In games, though, you're giving people fun and enjoyment. You're making people smile. You're making them laugh. You're making them you know, just be happy. So when you get to give them a game and you get to see their reaction and see the result and see the feedback, as long as it's good, as long as it's not totally terrible feedback, like everybody hates it, but usually that's not the case. So as long as you get, you're get you getting good feedback and you're able to you know show people your game, it's a lot more fun. The, the satisfaction just kind of kicks in, like the, the joy of building things kicks in. Now, again, I've had quite a bit of job satisfaction building enterprise applications. I find you know quite a bit of joy just solving problems and getting hard things done you know when there's a, an issue or something that's difficult to figure out and you kind of dive down and figure out what the problem is resolve it and make sure that it can't happen again that, that can be a lot of fun and pretty exciting but it's nowhere near as exciting as like coming up with and implementing some cool new mechanic that has thousands of people all excited and just ranting and raving and getting you know, thrilled about your game or the thing that you've released out there or having people just sitting around waiting and waiting for this new update to come out because they're really excited about something. So I, I find that the fun and satisfaction in games comes a lot from that. But there's also an extra little benefit, and that's that when you're working in game development, you'll find that most of the people that you're working with are actually into games and into game development. They actually really enjoy games and they really enjoy making games. They like the programming side of the programming games or the design side of designing games or the art side. Whatever the part is that they do, they're very, very into it. With enterprise stuff, it's um, a bit of a mix. I would say maybe like one out of three, maybe, maybe half, half of the people are very into what they're doing. They really like the development stuff. They want to talk about you know, the new web stacks, the new frameworks, all, all this new stuff that's coming out. And another half the person or maybe two thirds are just there kind of like, it's a, it's a job. I do this thing. This is it. Um, I don't really care about this stuff. It's, no, oh, it's, it's work and it's not like a, a passion or joy thing. But I find that just working in games, you get a lot more of that group excitement and passion kind of coming out. Now there could be downsides to that. I don't know but I've never really experienced them. I just really like the atmosphere of game development and the kind of excitement that comes along with it. So on this side again, I'm gonna give it to games. All right, before I go, I also wanted to jump back into the job availability thing one more time and give you that little bit of advice that I, I was gonna mention, which is that if you decide to get into game development and you have a hard time with it, then enterprise development is always an option. If you can write game code, you can easily learn how to write enterprise code. And this is probably the biggest tip that I would give you. If you're learning one, you should spend a little bit of time learning the other. I'm not saying that you should spend a lot of time, but dedicate maybe 10% of your time when you're doing some learning to just explore and examine what the other side looks like. If you're doing enterprise stuff, spend a little bit of time experimenting and learning game stuff. 
if you're doing game development stuff, spend a little bit of time setting up a web page. You know, build a build a web page or build a little Windows app or a little Mac app or something that you can try out. Maybe try a little bit of machine learning, something that's outside of the game development. Whatever it is, experiment back and forth a little bit. And what you'll find is that it's very easy to make a transition. If you can understand one type of coding, you can easily understand the other type. It's just a matter of learning a few new words and a little bit of structure and then putting things together. It comes, well, you build it up as kind of a muscle and a skill and it'll get easy to switch back and forth. And if you have a hard time finding a job in one side, it can be very easy to make the transition back and forth. Once you've done the transition once, it's very, very easy to go back and forth between the two. Also, if you're looking to advance your game development skills, I've got my full path bundle on sale right now where you can get all three courses for the price of one. And I've got a new course that's just about to come out. 